Cool. All right. So uh, you got some experts up here on the subject. Uh, give us your words. <laughs> you came all this way with no questions? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is, um, is multiple cross routes uh, supported in the set dashboard? Multiple cross rules in the Ceph, which? Um, in the Ceph dashboard. In the dashboard. Um, I believe so, although I <laughs> haven't used it. <laughs> I know you can modify pool properties, and I would assume that choosing um, which crush rule would be part of that. Okay. I'm not sure if you can create new crush rules to the dashboard, but oh. you'd have to go look. They're constantly adding stuff. They basically made a complete pass over just all the basic functionality. And now they're going back and like cleaning it up to make sure that these are the right options and it's presented in the most intuitive way and so on. Thank you. Hi, again, Peter Hivrenen from CSC. Um, there was a safe day Nordic on your presentation. Where is going to be held? Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Finland? Mike, do you know? Also. Also, end of November. Yes. I have a question for everybody here. Um, how many people run a Ceph cluster? You're an actual operator. All right. How many of you have not enabled the telemetry feature? Telemetry. How many are running Nautilus and haven't enabled telemetry? Okay, I would love to hear um, why, and if you have any questions, concerns about turning that on, because as the developers are super excited about getting that data. Um, so basically, on our side, our clusters are that old, and it's not enabled by default, or it's not complaining to enable it, and um, so um, yeah, that's basically the reason. So um, I think we will do it in the next days, so you will get some data. I think uh, uh, having um, telemetry sent to the outside, our Ceph cluster is too deep in the network. So um, maybe we could think about it, but then we need a staging area that can be uh, audited before we send the data. I don't know if it's a possibility. Uh, yes, another good point on that. Uh, is there a way to configure a HTTP proxy to get through? <laughs> Uh, Vito, yes, there is, yeah. Is it SOX or is it something else or? Okay, yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I think, <laughs> good question. I think there's a, you can turn the module on and off, but in starting an Octopus at least it's on by default, it's just, the module's on, but telemetry is turned off. Oh, where does it go? Right. Um, that's actually, somebody is pointing out that that's one thing that's missing from the documentation. So right now it's um, phoned home to a machine that's in the upstream Sepia lab, um, and it's dumped into a Postgres database, basically. Um, the Ceph lab has maybe 200 Ceph developers that have access to it. They have to apply for a VPN key, and then they can access it to all the upstream machines that we use for testing and such. And only maybe like five or 10 of those people have access to the particular machine that has the telemetry data. So not, people aren't really looking at it, but the most important thing is we're trying not to have any sensitive data in there in the first place. So even if we were broadcasting to the world, it shouldn't matter. Um, but we also don't want to broadcast it to the world. Um, most likely there's going to be some like summary reports with like which clusters or how many clusters are phoning in, what are the biggest clusters, what version distribution do we have as far as who's running what. Those will get like sent out via email. Um, and then the, the crash reports are the most important thing I think that will probably be visible to developers. Um, so that you can, given a particular stack signature, you can see um, how many times it's been observed on what versions. Um, no identifying information, so. Uh, 
Is anyone using SurfFS with multi-site? So, yeah. Yes, so SurfFS doesn't have any multi-site yeah. specific features yet, um, unless you were to stretch the, the Redis cluster. But you are stretching the Redis cluster, right? Or no, so one of the speakers, who is, who? You did it, yes, right. Thanks. So um, we did it somewhat adventurously, and um, but I think from our experience, I think that we would focus in in, a, in the general case we would focus very carefully on the links and make sure that we had good um, uh, quality of service to provide uh, near real time properties to the monitor protocols in particular. Um, if if the links were going to be stressed between the different sites and they were actually starting to saturate and congest, then. I think if you were very careful about doing that, that would be the first, the first caution I would, I would advise is to look at that. Um, I'd like to ask a question to basically the most of you guys in front there. Here I am. <laughs> um, so we are running a staging cluster and 